Hello, welcome to another podcast of Master Investor. Glad to be here again on another valuable talk on money, business, and investment. My name is Jose. I'm the founder of the company and brand. Welcome back if you're an existing listener. If you're new, make sure to subscribe here and follow us on all other social media platforms. Click the link somewhere on the description of this audio or on the live stream because we are doing a live stream right now on YouTube and as well Kick and other platforms. So if you're watching, make sure to check out the links in the description because we have tools, resources that ultimately helps us build total freedom, right? Because those tools are going to give us the ability to create money while we're sleeping and make money, make more money. And that's the holy grail, right? To utilize our capital to invest, to raise more capital and use other people's money as well, the bank's money, loans. But every time we touch our money, it has a plan, a financial plan to grow. And we're allocating that into sound assets that our companies control. When we talk about investing here in our community, we want everyone to understand. We don't want anyone of our members to ever give our money, your money away to anyone to invest it for you. Otherwise, that is considered a passive investor. And a passive investor means he or she lacks financial education and fears of investing. Investing comes with risk Okay, and the more financial education we have, the more calculated risk we can take and we can minimize that risk to the point where it's minimal. And even though the investment is a big investment, often we can minimize the risk in bigger investments, easier than the smaller investments. And the banks and other private lending institutions like to see bigger deals than small deals because then they can look at the deal rather than the person behind the deal more they will be paying attention at everything who are the one who's going to be the team that's going to be managing the deal are we taking over the entire operation with the current employees and everything we need to explain all of that when we bring the deal together but the bigger the deal is the better because the bank looks at the financial statements of that entity of that business every commercial real estate property is a business it's a real estate business and it produces cash flow to the point that we can see it on the financial statements and we can tell whether it is an asset or liability if it's cash flow and if there's any twist that we can implement remember we always say what is the twist and the twist goes for everybody and at any point of our life we can always have a new twist that will take us to a whole different level rapidly it's like quantum leap ourselves to wealth quickly because we have these tools and leverage nowadays due to technology that can we that that we can use to leverage ourselves to wealth fast okay to get us from point a to point b very quickly that's why i say invest money to become wealthy fast is today's topic and make sure that you check out our digital courses and ebooks we have three the 10 new rules of money, how to build cash flow with the internet, turn passive income on, how to invest in crypto to build wealth, understanding Bitcoin and blockchain. And there are five different asset classes that exist. So we're breaking everything down in regards to each asset class so that our partners and all of our members and listeners and everybody here, our master investor, can grab whatever we need to create the wealth that we want. And we always encourage everyone to diversify among the five different asset classes. In other words, learn about every single asset class, which are five different ones. We explain them inside of our ebooks, so make sure you go get them as a must read, all of them. And having all the digital courses is into your advantage because we are adding more assets, it's a vivid course. Now, if you just want to have the ebook and maybe you want the paperback, go to Amazon, find them over there. We have them listed there. But if I'm in your position and I'm listening to one of my mentors, I'm going to go to the website and get it from our website. Why? Because I'm encouraging you to go there. You'll have a better deal because there's more value to be found there than just getting the ebook alone. You'll have additional assets in the future that are available to you at no additional cost. You'll be grandfathered in forever. And 
each has is growing because we add in tools, resources, and exclusive interviews with wealth entrepreneurs, celebrities, and other great people that will share their golden nuggets with our members in that specific digital course to emphasize on the topic of each course, which is related to the topic of the book. Okay. And as everything is changing constantly, we need to learn how to be flexible and adapt and be comfortable with that and be comfortable by being uncomfortable at all times because that means we are growing. So if you want to start a channel on YouTube, go ahead and start. If you want to you know, start a business because you have this passion, go ahead and start. You like music, why don't you create a channel that plays music in the background? You see it all the time, just enter on YouTube, play music, call music in the background to study or to go to sleep. Or you know, maybe you have, and you can download the sounds. Okay, you don't have to create the sounds. You can download them and there are ways that you can upload them into your own YouTube channel as long as you're bringing in views and the, there's no copyright on the music and there's plenty of music out there without um, having an issue with copyright. It's free for everybody and meaning that you will not get, you can monetize the YouTube channel. Okay, so, or maybe you can have your environment right playing in the background or whatever it is maybe there's a lot of rain or just use your resources everything that you have around you is a tool to become wealthy look at that perspective from that point of view okay turn everything into like your advantage no matter what okay you always have a move to make and that move needs to be aligned with our financial goals a lot of times we have to learn how to say no to other people that maybe we like and we love dearly and i'm talking about family and close friends and whatnot people that maybe you grew up with you have to say no to protect a deeper yes and that deeper yes is a yes to our dreams to what we want out of this life this gift of life that we have that is so precious that one day we won't be here in this physical form. We will be always a spirit, right? And we need to bring that entrepreneurship spirit out. Call it the entrepreneurial spirit. We all have one, by the way. We all are born with passions, skills, talents, and abilities to help the world become a better place. We must develop those abilities. We can be born with the talents and the affinity towards those activities, but it's our duty to the bow and create the time to work on those crafts and be able to monetize them because we have the financial education. So whatever we are doing regarding our crafts and our passions, the only way to monetize is if we have some foundation on financial education. And that's the way we can build true wealth. Because otherwise, money will always be your master. And the idea here is to make money our master and to utilize money as a vehicle, which is a tool to multiply and not to shrink and not to stress. Actually, the very opposite, to create abundance, to be able to help us achieve our dreams and what we want to give back to the world, depending on how we feel. We're living beings and we're evolving at all times. And that, that evolution that we're undertaking needs to be watered with great things. Partners, only quality people in our circle. We need to be disciplined and be unapologetically when it comes to building our dreams. Don't share the dreams with the wrong group of people, small-minded people, because it'll make you feel small. We need to stay on the path of thinking big. If we can see it in our mind, if we can wrap our minds around that idea, regardless of how much other people may see as an impossible, or may op have an opinion of, of the king and wrap their mind around, if we were to explain it to them, we, if, as long as we can see it in our mind and we can be there, we can bring it into reality. And there are several steps that we need to take immediately in order to see that taking shape. And we talked about that a few days ago. So if you wanna watch the last the live streams on YouTube, then make sure you go over there and they're all safe. 
And look at that. Yesterday, we had a great discussion on, I'll tell you the title. Just give me one second. A practical strategy for wealth abundance. And we said that it takes a spending and investing wisely for money to build wealth. We should avoid cutting expenses when we are building wealth. Focus on expanding our asset column with real assets that we control with our companies. We need more than just savings for a rainy day. Having emergency funds, cash flow from assets on hand gives us security in difficult times, if there are any. The secret to a wealthy future is acquire cash flow and assets. The phrase, a dollar safe is a dollar earned, most people will also believe that that to be true, which is far away from it. Dollar is not longer real money. Money stopped being money back in August 15, 1971, when President Richard Nixon altered the money regulations, which separated the gold standard from the US dollar. And the reason why we did that, and I explained this before, but for the new members, I would like to bring you up to date with what's happening with today's economy, which is actually music to the entrepreneur and the inside investor. That's who we are here, Master Investor. That's we are who are we becoming and building, right? True leaders, wealth entrepreneurs, and inside investors. And before you even be all of that, you first have to be that in our mind. We have to act like it. And it's not faking until we make it. It's about doing it on purpose and acting like that individual and carrying ourselves with the right vocabulary and improving our mindset every single day. We're like sponges. How much are we feeding our minds and what are we feeding ourselves in our temple and our bodies? Health has to be right there with wealth. We need to be juggling those four pillars of an extraordinary life. Health, wealth, love, and happiness. And we're here every single day since the year started. We're going to continue to provide high-quality financial education. It is our duty to do so and give back to the world what works today in regards to money. So check out the 10 new rules of money and all other ebooks that we have because they are all essential and they are great investments because they are vivid digital assets. We literally turn the ebook that you're going to purchase it's going to be an investment to financial education that will increase in value because not only we will update any outdated content of that ebook to reflect the new changes and so forth, but we also add in new assets as we move along. So it grows in price, it's going to increase in value most definitely. In fact, after you watch this video, maybe tomorrow, it might just go in price because we're constantly adding assets. But when you get in today, when you watch this, just go ahead and lock, lock in with ASI, our master investor, invest in your financial education. And we always encourage you to also look at other mentors. Of course, there are great entrepreneurs, communities out there, speaking the right language and of course, giving the right mindset to their community because not all the financial gurus are great for our minds. We need to protect two types of mind, the poor and the wealthy mindset when it comes to money. So when we're getting information, the first thing we need to ask ourselves, who are we getting this information from? Is this the poor mindset or the wealthy mindset? Regardless of how they look, what they're showing you and the background, right? Listen to their words. The message is what counts. Yes, the other stuff is for motivation, but you also have to think about how did they obtain everything that they have? Maybe they obtain it by doing it the wrong way, working hard for money or doing something in their have bad debt. They don't have any cash flow coming in. You need to be listening to the right data so that you can create freedom because wealth is measured with freedom, not with money. It's measured with the free time that we have without working and being able to maintain the lifestyle and for how long can we go can we go with that without shrinking without cutting expenses in fact without thinking about even living below our means ever moving above our means all the time living above our means it doesn't mean we have to be wasteful 
it means that we're focusing on increasing our asset column. Instead of cutting, we're expanding our income from our asset column. And we explain the three reasons why saving money is a path to poverty. It's not a smart strategy for someone that has financial education and basic financial education. We don't need to know too much about money and business to understand that savings is a bad strategy. If you're just doing savings alone, without any investments that are, that are producing passive income right now, where there's a digital asset, it could be affiliate marketing that you're promoting other people's products, which I highly recommend to get started on that if you never made money online and if your asset column is empty right now, that's the fastest way to tap into direct sales and passive income because a lot of them are subscription products, meaning that every time the customer makes a payment, every month we get a payment to our bank account and not to our bank account, to the business bank account, our business bank account, because we help understand that we must do business with our entity, with an entity that we control. So what I'm saying is incorporate as soon as possible. If we're talking about building business and wealth successfully, like the wealth to do, no questions asked. Oh no, if you don't have money coming in yet, it doesn't matter. We have to treat it as if it's already a big business. We're expecting to make money. We're doing business to be for a profit. This is a capitalism system that we live and that we operate with. We must control the trade or the business, the asset to create a profit because we're solving a problem in the world, in the community, in the marketplace, right? And today we have the entire world on our fingertips so we can expand on our markets and we can reach new markets and expand that business. So what is the twist of each business that we're going to build or obtain, right? What are we going to do to increase the bottom line of that business without us having to work? And that's the whole dilemma right there to make it work without us having to work. We will put in the time at the beginning. We might have sleepless nights. As a wealthy entrepreneur and inside investor, we're always on the clock. It never stops for us, but it doesn't mean that we're always working or we're obligated to work. We're doing what we're doing to create total freedom in our life, so we have control over our time at all times. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Why would we want to have excess of cash flow to not be able to even enjoy that cash flow? Or that money because people that have high paying jobs they may have money in the bank account but are they free can they enjoy that they have to show up to work or their income stops flowing in and then they freak out because they got used to living from a paycheck and it's just like anything you get used to something they take it away from you you might have a withdrawal of that he's messing in the person's lifestyle. So savings alone is a path for poverty. I want us to understand that and it takes more than that. If you have successfully saved money, congratulations. That is actually something that a person needs to go through to understand the discipline and the value of it, right? But every time we save money, we lose some money. We need to move that money to a sound investment. It's better to be saved than you're giving your money away. I'll tell you that to somebody to invest it for you. Because you lose control. You want to have liquid excess of cash flow at all times. And that's why we encourage everyone to build businesses that buy other businesses, that buy other investments, etc. And repeat that cycle. That's how we tap into the velocity of cash flow. And that's how we reach infinite return on investment, which that's what we look for on each investment that we make as an inside investor. And a wealthy entrepreneur, an inside investor is a master investor. An inside investor means that we are controlling the deal. Where there is one product, I don't care what it is, how big or small it is, as long as we have the control over that asset, then we are building the asset column like the wealthy do, okay? We want to have control over businesses. We don't want to just have a little percentage, one little stock here, 
eventually the excess of cash flow will buy stocks from other businesses and so forth in the stock market but we have strategies that we explain in some of our digital course how to create passive income with the stocks that we're getting by applying several different strategies even when the stock falls we can steal cash flow by renting them and we explained that in one of our chapters inside of the how to build cash flow with the intern turn passive income on rule number one in our community here master investor is that we focus and we work to build passive income okay and make money work hard through sound investing that's our main focus because that's what the ultra wealthy do and then capital gains income will come meaning that there are several assets that will bring in gains after they go up in value and then we sell them for a profit such as commodities gold silver that's real money and gold there's a limit amount like bitcoin there's a limit amount and that's what makes it valuable and today crypto is not just an asset class as we explained previously but for the new partners we have to bring that up to date and for existing partners if we know this information then there's nothing wrong with reminding ourselves that that exists and give us confirmation that we have the right mindset, the wealthy mindset. We want to operate with the right context. As I said before, we created a live stream on just the difference between the content versus context. School systems and the poor focuses on content and they have their wrong context. They have the context of the poor mindset. I say wrong because if they're trying to become wealthy, then they have their own framework. They need to upgrade that. And it's possible by listening to podcasts like this, reading articles. We encourage you to go to our website. We have a free newsletter. Every single day goes out to our community. And this type of information is exclusive, is unique, is priceless. We do it to empower our community To the next level financially to create total freedom that's what we want everyone here at master investor to be able to do to accomplish their dreams because they have control over their finances and they understand how to invest money how to build the business how to turn that into a brand how to do and control systems how to promote offers using systems and smart marketing and how to build the email list every single day i master long time ago how to have leads coming in from everywhere from different ads that i have going for different businesses different investments different offers partnerships affiliate marketing right and having those freedom units out there even live streams right once this is over the video plays 24 7. i don't mind coming in here and sharing valuable content with our community Number one, that is my duty here as I'm the founder of the brand and I love to do it because I wanna make sure that we are aligned with our mission at all times moving forward in the stages of growth. But our infrastructure and our team behind is tremendous. And the most important thing is that we built our brand to help humanity. And the ones that are becoming partners, right? Whoever listens or touches our brand is going to empower their finances the right way because we understand that the power lays in financial education. And that's what we are doing on a daily basis, giving financial education to the world. Just with the free content alone, it's already priceless. However, when you invest in your financial education, it is something that no one can ever take away from us. So we can never go wrong with that as long as we have the right mentors in front of us. And we need to have investing in financial education as priority on our expense. And that's something that we're going to talk about today because a lot of people have it backwards and most people don't even get to invest or study financial education, invest in assets and invest in financial education because they don't have any money left at the end of the month. They pay everybody else first before they pay themselves. So paying ourselves first before we pay anyone else is critical when we are attempting to build true wealth. And we need to be willing to take pressure. 
as well because entrepreneurship comes with pressure and we need to be flexible at all times in this new economy and the new ways that are being born left and right right uh, with the artificial intelligence being able to sell worldwide more competition than ever meaning that we have to innovate innovation is our friend and we need to have a department in our organizations to innovate a department needs to be only the only duty of that department is to innovate daily to take what we have made what we're creating what we're selling and turn that into something else and invent something else that doesn't exist that could be useful that could be maybe an accessory to that one product however as i always say and repeat invest in systems no products because a sound business is a system of systems and we need to control them so we need to have the right systems including our email autoresponder when you get our ebook it's going to give you a step by step on how to get set up online with the systems but we need to invest in systems focus on that first because the products are not the most important components of the successful business it's one of the components they're a and we learned that inside of the cash flow triangle we have that diagram inside of our ebook it has eight components and every successful business is built with this eight components one of those components is the product but it's not the most important because they all count as important all of them they cannot live without each other they have to be working together and well established and when we buy a business we need to take a look at that cash flow triangle and go with it and be like okay does it have this does it have that what's the twist on this business is being mismanaged by the current owner can i implement this twist would it create more cash flow is it an asset is it a liability knowing the difference between an asset and liability is also critical majority of people have it backwards they don't even know what is a real asset because they're thinking they're investing and they're calling assets their 401k mutual funds bonds and fake vehicles that are all is doing is taking money away from them every single month meaning that's a liability because the definition in our community of an asset in simple terms is that an asset is a business or an investment that puts money in our pocket whenever we're not working constantly in the form of passive income and the liability takes money away from us there's nothing wrong with having liabilities as long as we have assets that will cover for the obligation and the expenses of those liabilities so it's not about cutting expenses or shrinking or being out of debt in fact we want everyone to learn how to manage debt and to get into good debt if you have bad debt get into good debt that's how we come out of bad debt there's nothing wrong with having bad debt we will always have bad debt at some point because we want to have liabilities in our lives we want to have things that maybe it's not going to make us money it's just going to cost us money but we want to have that that experience it could be a car that we like to drive however we can always turn a liability in many instances to become an asset maybe we start renting the cars that we have the exotic cars to tourists and then we use that money to pay for the lease of the car and now that becomes an asset we're driving it for free whenever we want to and it's creating us money so with financial education it gives us the power to look at our financial statement or look at any financial statement and determine whether there is hope to improve that financial statement to the next level what's the twist and how we can improve our financial statement by acquiring sound assets constantly and our goal is to follow rule number 1 here at master investor which is to work to build passive income and make money work hard through sound investing make sure you click the link in the description to access our digital courses invest in financial education that's the investment that we're going to encourage everyone to make from here on is how you're going to deal with your finances because we're all building our asset columns together right your own business I'm minding my business everybody's minding their own business and we're sharing tools resources financial education everything that we need in order to have success as an entrepreneur and an investor in this new world of money Today money is created with debt. Money is monopoly money, is fiat currency, paper. And just an idea backed up by confidence. August 
15, 1971, that's when President Nixon separated the gold standard from the US dollar. From that, moment, from that point forward, it became debt. And debt is tax-free because money is created with debt. The banks are in the business of lending money. The banks need to have assets in their portfolio to print more money, to ask and show the Federal Reserve Bank that they can handle more printed invisible currency, right? Because it's digital. We cannot see money with our eyes anymore. It's not longer real money. Long, gold is not longer back in the dollar, okay? So we need to move forward with the mindset that money is invisible, money is digital. It's an idea backed up by confidence. And when we do that, then we have a better approach when it comes to building excess of cash flow. Because now we start focusing on that asset column, we can tap into unlimited sales online, we can utilize the tools that we're providing here inside of our community and tools that we find online. Today we have artificial intelligence, just ask about a tool that you need and it will create it for us or give us the information. We can pay third parties to do the tasks that we don't want to get involved with because it will take our time from us and we want to always keep control of our time and have free time at all times so that we can devote our time towards our passions and give back to the community the way we want to impact the world in a positive manner. Who do we want to be remembered as when we pass, right? When people think of us, what type of work do we leave in the world? A lot of people never leave anything except their family and so forth, and that's valuable, of course, but I mean, what to the world? You know, what are your passions and talents that we can express and it monetize them? Because maybe there are people that are seeking information or getting inspiration from your talents and maybe it's a recipe that you need to share and you can sell it. Maybe you're really good at cooking <clears throat> and now you can create a quick guide on how to cook healthy, right? You can sell it online. That will be your first digital product. We need to have innovation in our organizations, but we also have to be innovating at all times in our lives, in our personal lives. We need to be thinking about how we can make more money without working, thinking smarter, working less, making more. And the next thing we need to do is to make money, make more money through sound investing by compounding that revenue, that income, whatever is left from our assets, whatever bottom line is ours, whatever after all expenses are paid, whatever is left, we need to treat that as an expense, not as an asset, meaning that we need to put that back into our asset column and meaning that we need to put it through the expense column because it's already destined to, um, de destined to go somewhere to work. It could be a new asset that we're going to acquire. So now we're going to invest it in an asset that we've been doing due diligence for the past three months or the past year. And now's the right time to go ahead and acquire that asset. You see, so every time we touch or utilize our money, it has a plan to create more money. We can only do that when we have financial education. If you have any questions, let us know. If you're learning something new, please write it down and share your thoughts. It helps the channel. Give a like and share the content with your inner circle. We need to get our team members on the same page, including your family members. If you have your partner, talk about money because majority of people get divorced due to the lack of talking about money and the lack of planning financial future together that is abundant rather than shrinking and saving and cutting expenses and working harder and seeing less and creating less memory with the people that they love. Instead, learn how to master money, learn how to utilize money to create more money by investing it in assets that we control with our companies, not just buying little stocks here and there and not have any dividends or anything coming in. And it's not even enough to retire a person early. We need to have excess of cash flow coming in from different manners, different legal ways that we can do online. Today's summary is appropriate budgeting is the secret to financial success. Comprehending the distinction between an asset and a liability is crucial for appropriate financial planning.
spending, spending will make us wealthy, saving one. There are two mindsets when it comes to money, poor versus wealthy mindset. We can study the wealthy and poor mindset, the caref then carefully choose the one that we wish to oper operate with. Our context is critical because the context is what determines the type of mindset that we are operating with. The context means the belief systems, the values, the way we think how money is created, uh, how money is created today, what we know about wealth, the philosophy in regards to money. That's the context. And a lot of people are operating with the poor context. Therefore, even if they have the right content in front of them, they still cannot use it because the framework is wrong and doesn't fit in that framework. So we need to deep, dig deep inside of us and unlearn and replace the old habits, the old rules of money, whatever is not working in today's new economy, then we need to adopt the wealthy mindset, the values, the belief system, so that we can now comprehend the content that we're giving here inside of our community, a master investor. And we're doing it right now. It's happening as we speak. The more you come in and you listen and you invest in your daily financial education, whether there is reading one article, going to sleep a little smarter than we were yesterday. Once we accomplish that goal, becoming a little smarter every single day, you'll be surprised how much that advances us towards success and the ideal scene that we all want to experience in our lives, right? We want to be the best version of, we, of what we can be. We want to always be that person. And we need to focus our energy on our asset column so that we can create time for ourselves, have free time to do whatever we want at any time without worrying about money. And instead, money just working hard for us all the time. And we get wealthier and wealthier because inflation keeps rising. We use that to create more money because that means the money loses value so we can raise more money through debt for cheaper dollars. And we can utilize that to become wealthier and print money from thin air because once we recoup the entire capital back, if we invest any of our own capital back, then that means that we control the asset with no money in the deal and we still receive capital, cash flow from the asset. That means it's infinite return on investment. It's money for nothing. That's a printed machine of cash flow. And that's what we're striving to do on any type of business that we build. And the business has to run on its own. So if you cannot push your idea through the eye of a needle without you pushing yourself through it because we can't fit through the eye of a needle, you have to push your idea and it has to come on the other side. And if that idea can work without us being present, then that has potential to become a true brand because we're doing a business for the world, not for us only. Otherwise, that's a hobby. We need to do it to solve problems and to serve as many people as possible. So push your ideas through the eye of the needle. If they can't go without you, then it's not a business or shouldn't be a business. It's a good way to test our ideas. I've been doing that for years now, and it has helped me. Today, we must be able to handle pressure and withstand it in order to be a successful entrepreneur and investor. Which frame of mind apply to us? Saving is an, effect, an ineffective method when it comes to achieving financial freedom. It is crucial to keep in mind that money is only a means of exchange. It cannot have worth unless it is converted into something else. It kills it. It kills if it stops moving. Similar to an electrical current. That's why I said earlier, it must move from asset to asset. So as we get in cash flow left from our assets, that's our bottom line. We gotta treat that not as an asset to go buy liabilities unless we created the asset to buy that liability. And we will do that. We will create just an asset to pay for a liability that we want. And that liability will be with us forever because the asset can take care of the payments of that liability. Or maybe it's just one time payment and that liability can buy that liability and buy other liabilities. But we want to treat our leftovers, if you will, for lack of a better word, our bottom line, our cash flow, 
treat it as an expense rather than an asset, meaning that we already have a plan for that money to work, to create more money. At the end, we're going to grab that money again. It's going to create money for nothing. We need to have investments that are bringing in infinite return on investment. That's when we have none of our money invested in those deals. We either raise the entire capital to acquire or build that deal through debt, or we or seller finance, right? That's a form of debt. It doesn't have to come from the banks. We can do seller finance straight from the owner. The owner gives us credit and say, okay, pay me this much every single month or every year for the next 30 years. Something that I always say, I'll pay you your price, but you adhere to my terms. So I'll give you your price, but I'll take 30, 40 years to pay you. And I have a twist. I have many twists that I can do in the business and I'll take them to the next level. You see, and so things that the current owner is not doing. So always apply the twist mindset and also the other tip that I gave earlier, which is read the financial statements, invest in your financial education so that you are aware when it comes to doing due diligence on any type of business that we want to build or do for that matter. A common misconception is that investing is the same as placing money in an interest-bearing savings account. We gratefully, inflation has the potential to cancel out or even neutralize the interest earned in any savings account. Saving money therefore implies that our money is not increasing at all. In fact, as inflation outpaces our profits, there is a good possibility our money will lose value if you're saving money, right? Because of this, one must budget like a wealthy person in order to become wealthy. We cannot budget like a poor person when you're attempting to become wealthy. Now, if you want to be middle class and stay working for money the rest of your life and you don't care, then you say, okay, it's going to work. Retire when you're 65 and as long as you put money in your 401k, they're guaranteeing you this. You don't know that because you don't know those companies if they're going to be relevant in 20, 30, 40 years from now and you lose control when you're giving your money, but that's your plan. Everybody has their plan. We're not telling you which one to do. We're just asking you if you're here in our community, that means you're attempting to be a true leader, a wealth entrepreneur, and an insight investor, which means we're investing for passive income through companies that we control 100%. We're not giving our money away to anyone to invest it for us. So we need to budget like the wealthy do, which is increase our income through expending our asset column. It's not about cutting expenses. We don't care about, oh my God, uh, we have bad debt. We need to get out of debt. No, we want to get in more good debt. We have bad debt. Okay, let's get into good debt. We need to invest into an asset that will help us pay for the liabilities and the expenses. So the problem of financial problems is number one, invest in our financial education so we have the real power and then apply that information into our asset column so that we can create passive income now. It's not in 10 years from now. We want to see cash flow coming in right now. That's why I say tap into affiliate marketing using other people's products. OPP, other people's products. OPT, other people's time. OPM, other people's money. OQP, only quality people. Make sure we remember all of these terms because they are important when we're building our wealth. Everything that I'm sharing is valuable tips that I have used and my mentors have used to create tremendous amounts of wealth and break free from working for money and have assets bringing us money instead of us chasing clients. Clients are chasing us and we have unlimited leads coming in because we have sales funnels and we have the right marketing planted on the appropriate channels worldwide. People are seeing our advertisements that we have with our message. And it doesn't have to be our products that we're selling. It can be other people's products. It doesn't have to be our videos or our voice that is behind the ads at all. We can pay other people to do the ads for us. We can create text ads and we can send the lead, the potential customer, to the sales page of that business directly. However, I highly recommend that we capture the lead before we send them through our sales funnels of the affiliate partner. In other words, we need to have a capture page in front of 
the sales funnels of that sales page that we grab from that affiliate partner because we want to be able to communicate ongoing even after the customer purchase we want to build rapport with that customer because we can sell something to them again so we don't want to lose that data because if we send them directly to them we will get paid if they purchase something when they purchase something but we lose the name and the email we need to capture that that's one of the most important things because we need to build our email list that's where the real money is we need to build our networks so that we can communicate with them successfully using the strategies that we're going to be explaining throughout our content here and our products because of this we need to understand how to invest like the wealthy how to utilize money to become wealthier and create more money with it because we have financial education as an as aside too often the extra money is spent on something like a vacation or a new car meaning money that could be working for us is now making us work for a liability that's the approach many people take and they have liabilities before they have assets we need to have assets before we have liabilities first we must build or acquire and if you already have liabilities they get to work on the asset column immediately it's not about cutting the expenses and maybe you need to get rid of those liabilities just get to work on the asset column and pay yourself first before you pay everybody else meaning that you will use that money that you're paying to everybody else you're going to tell everybody else to hold up and you're going to utilize that to invest in your financial education and invest in an asset that will produce passive income so that you can start paying everything up to date, okay? And make sure you follow a strategy that is solid that you can achieve every single day, something that you can see results. And we have actionable steps inside of our total guide, how to build cash flow with the internet term passive income. Also click the link in the description. First, we must build or acquire the asset, then with the revenue from it, we will spend that on the liability we want to have on, and that way it is free because the asset is paying for it instead of us working for money to pay for something. How wealthy individuals manage money. Once more, saving alone is not a winning path towards true wealth. There are countless tales of currencies collapsing to nothing. However, the truth is that instances of financial saving gone bad can be found without going all the way back in time. For instance, the US dollar and the Zimbabwean dollar were equal in value in 1983. By 2008, the same US dollar required 669 billion Zimbabwean dollars to be exchanged. Zimbabwe, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm saying that, pronouncing correctly, but you get the point. People that store Zimbabwe dollars lost a lot of money because the country was completely destroyed by hyperinflation in the early 2000s. Cash is, in essence, a sum zero game. So how can one win if saving is a loser? Or saver is a loser, right? Saving is a losing strategy. Let's start by examining our budgeting process. Live below your means, majority people have been taught the poor mindset that shrinks the entrepreneurial spirit rather than, than expanding it as it should be. So that mindset of living below your means is the poor mindset. We need to get rid of that immediately. We must expand our asset column and live above our means. The poor mindset's way of handling money and budgeting is all about reducing costs to match their income. Paying everyone else first and then enjoying what is left, if any, is his or her top focus of the poor mindset. The goal of the wealthy mindset is to raise his or her passive income, which requires us to become great at raising capital legally. It is crucial that we take care of our expenses after paying ourselves first. Our budget is a plan to become wealthy. Most people use it as a plan to become poor or middle class, having the poor mindset. Middle class and poor class have the poor mindset. Both have the similar mindset when it comes to investing. They work for money and they save money. And then the middle class invest in fake assets, such as 401ks. 
and mutual funds and so forth and savings accounts rather than to become wealthy. So without further ado, let's examine the four wealthier people's budget and financial guidelines. Clue number one, and cost is a budget surplus. The wealthy mindset taught us a valuable lesson here. We have to make a surplus and expense. We are making reference to the notion that the majority of people consider the excess money to be an asset. And they support this perception by depositing it in the bank or using it for debt, bad debt, to buy a liability. An ensign investor and wealthy entrepreneur see additional money left from our assets as an expense for investing and charitable given rather than as a resource or an asset. The issue is that most people are playing everyone else's, they're paying everyone else's first. To make matter worse, they do not get wealthy because they put investing in assets and charitable given as things to do after their bills have been paid. And that's the main issue. They don't even have money to pay their bills. And after they pay everybody else, they have no money to invest in their financial education. They have no money left to invest in any asset to even incorporate a company. However, the wealthy mindset prioritizes and budget for investing and give back by investing and paying ourselves first before we pay anybody else. This practice knows, known as paying ourselves first involves setting away some cash flow emergency reserves. We need to create excess of cash flow so that we have excess of money coming in at all time in case we need something to do, something we have. The means to act and manifest and solve problems. The secret to knowing how to save money and become wealthy is this. Wealthy individuals use our savings as a safety net, and I call it extra excess of cash flow, not savings. I don't like to use the word savings because it shrinks you, it makes you feel like you're the opposite, and it is too, it's the very opposite. Savers are losers in the new economy and good debtors are winners, but we need to have excess of cash flow and we need to have that coming in so that we can utilize it. So we use that instead, uh, instead of using it as a safety net in case things turn tough and we are unable to quickly sell our assets and other possessions. So we use that you know, as a safety net to, to protect ourselves from down economies or something to fix something. We have the capital and to raise more capital because we can go to a bank and say, hey, we have 50 million in this account. Can you give us a credit line? And the bank is like, oh yeah, I'll give you another 50 million credit line. Now we have 100 million. We do not use our savings as an investment or a way to get wealthy, which is what most, be, most wrongly do. As an added piece of knowledge, aim to have available around six months worth of living costs of all times, but focus all the time on increasing the asset column by actively investing. The wealthy or the 10% of the entire population buy assets first, as you can see on the diagram if you're watching this on our YouTube. And if you wanna have the article, make sure you go get it because there's a beautiful and informative diagram that we created. And that shows how the wealthy 10% of the population handles money. We buy assets first and pay taxes after, if any taxes. So number one, acquire assets. Number two, pay taxes, if any. And then number three, acquire liabilities. Wealthy people buy or acquire assets first before tax dollars and pay zero in taxes on many occasions. Then we acquire liabilities by having the assets pay for the expenses of liabilities. All is done legally using the laws of the tax code and corporate law. Clue number two, our financial future is determined by the expenses we list first. Back bankers don't give any care about our grades once we step foot in the real world. Instead, our financial report card is the only thing that interests them, which is a financial statement. Our, a financial report card, what is it? Our personal financial statement has a solution. All of our revenue sources, including earn, paychecks, tips, and wages for those who work, pass, passive income, because you could be the four players at the same time on the cash flow circle. Passive cash flow from real estate and portfolio dividends from investments should be listed in the income portion of our income statement. On the other hand, our monthly expenses should include all of our automobile insurance and mortgage payments, etc. 
Look no farther than our cost column to make predictions about our financial future. A comparison of two distinct expense columns may be seen here below. Person A, donation to charity, savings, books of investing, seminar on real estate, gym shoes, personal coach. Person B, six pack of beer, new shoes, new TV, football tickets, another six pack of beer, bag of potato chips. Even though it is funny example, it is not too dissimilar from reality. The majority of people's spending columns are cluttered with payments to creditors and other parties. Expenses in each scenario only go towards items that permanently drain our bank account or their bank account and never towards something that would generate revenue for them while they're sleeping or enjoying life. Look at our expense column when we review our budget for this year and what way does it describe us? It will be harder for us to get wealthy if it resembles the right column above or the person B that I mentioned rather than the left one or per person A. How, it, how is our, how is the expense being, how are the expenses being paid from the asset column? Right? How are they being paid from the asset column or a job? How are we paying for our expenses? That will answer a lot. The poor, 90% pay taxes first and maybe buy assets after. They, their expenses look, they pay number one, pay taxes because they work for money, they get a check, taxes are taken out. Number two, they acquire liabilities. Number three, number three, if any, they acquire assets, if they have anything, right, left. Usually they have no assets. And if they call in mutual funds assets, those are liabilities, those are no assets because it's withdrawing money out of them every month. Unless it puts money into their pocket, it's not an asset. Poor mindset, try to buy assets with after tax dollars. Many times it is not enough to afford any assets after everything is paid, including their liabilities. Clue number three, make our assets duty to cover obligations as we cover above the majority of budgeting tools assist us in better understanding our finances by directing us to use a spreadsheet or budgeting template to make a list of our monthly income and expenses. Although this is a fantastic place to start, the income statement only provides us with a partial view of our finances. We must comprehend how our assets and liabilities compare in order to comprehend our overall financial situation. Asking ourselves how can we afford it? will help us avoid stating the opposite, which is we'll be, not, we'll be denying that one has the capital now to acquire X, Y, and Z, and that shrinks the person's mind and the ability to find the answers to acquire the item that we want. So how can we afford it? It's something that we need to use at all times, even when we don't have the capital at that moment to acquire, regardless of how expensive we may think it is. We, Remember, see money as an idea, don't see it as an expense, or is it valuable to us? Okay, how much is the price? Okay, we have an asset and we're gonna pay for that. We're gonna build this asset, we're gonna acquire the asset to pay for that so that we can have it for free. We can buy luxuries and liabilities by increasing our assets, which we can start with real estate investments and acquire or build businesses that boost monthly cash flow. Invest our money onto the asset, generate the necessary cash flow to buy the lo lovely car we have always wanted. We will then have a wonderful asset in the form of a car. The most crucial thing we can do to get wealthy is to prioritize taking care of and paying ourselves first in our budget plan. Tip number four, spend to get wealthy rather than save. Developing a mindset that stays when we go on, when the, uh, when the goings get tough, the tough get going, is necessary to be able to implement the first three budgeting suggestions or what we talked about above. When things are hard, most people quit saving, investing, and giving to charities. They don't even they don't even have money to invest or do anything to get themselves out of the hole. The budget of the wealthy is not like that. Even in hard times, the wealthy find methods to increase our income by investing in more cash flow and assets. We gain a mindset that will allow us to earn more money regardless of the situation by preserving through those difficult times will become wealthier than we ever dream of as a result.
We should start a company. Our goal is to become financially, if our goal is to become financially independent and have total freedom as we grow our wealth. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I'll talk to you on the next talk. Let me know if you learned something new and start invest and click the link in the description. Bring you the good and bad news of money, the business principles are working on economies. They say extraordinary and wealthy. Bye for now.